You're walking in the woods. You're all alone, and your phone is dead. Somehow, your radio seems to be working, though it has no batteries. Keep walking. Focus on the sound of my voice. You are not awake. Nevertheless, welcome to Wolf Trap. As always, this is Freddy Lowndes, with all the news that's fit to tell. Speaking of which, I have received a number of anonymous disparaging faxes. This would be less alarming if I actually owned a fax machine. If the perpetrator is listening, please desist. While I will acknowledge the creativity that went into the combination of petty insults and existential terror, you are wasting paper. Think of the environment. A team of scientific experts released an announcement today revealing that Wolf Trap is not, in fact, real. It was all just a prank that got out of hand, said James Price, who prefers to go by Jimmy and who is an integral part of the collective under the supervision of a vague yet menacing government agency. They apologize for any inconvenience this may cause, but look forward to the future ahead and to the discoveries that will be made in light of this new information. The city council has declined to comment, but the whispering in the woods has become more agitated. In other news, rumors abound that semi-professional pie critic Dale Cooper will be paying a visit to our town. Officials are planning to organize a pie contest. If Mr. Cooper agrees to judge it, the winner will receive a commemorative milk jug and gift certificate to Whole Foods. The participant who places last will be summarily executed. If Mr. Cooper does not agree to judge the contest, it will instead be judged by an unkindness of collectively sentient ravens or Mayor Bloom, depending on availability. And also, the diner special for the following week will be a mystery goulash. As of yesterday, the general store will no longer be selling binoculars. There have been numerous reports of malfunction, or rather, unexpectedly effective function. Certain consumers have seen into incomprehensible distance, a place beyond space and time, populated by unspeakable horrors. Or that's what we assume they saw, anyway. The gibbering and heretical tongues can be a bit hard to understand. This just in. A heavy fog is rolling in from the north. It seems to be hissing. All residents are advised to keep indoors, with all doors and windows shut and locked. Stay out of sight if possible. Unrelatedly, a labyrinth has appeared next to the high school. It was discovered by a junior, Ardelia Mapp, four days ago when she went outside to practice for the upcoming mandatory battle royale only to find the death trap obstacle course replaced by tall stone walls, or possibly hedges, or possibly mirrors, depending on who you ask. Various students have confirmed that it is a labyrinth and not a maze, and that there is only one path to follow, heading to a central space. When asked what the space contains, each and every witness only shook their head silently. According to school officials, everyone who has entered the labyrinth so far has, eventually, exited it, alive and whole, but forever changed. If only high school itself were so easy to survive. When asked for an opinion, Mayor Alana Bloom was quoted as saying, Why do you consider every time I leave my house a press conference? I'm just getting my mail, for God's sake. Don't you have anything better to do? Members of the press apparently did not, as they were still there when the secret police arrived a half hour later. All those, that is, who are not clever enough to disguise themselves as topiary. When she came back outside to ask what was happening, the mayor was assured that the reporters were being taken to a nice farm upstate, where they will be able to practice uncensored journalism to their heart's content. An update on the fog. Frederick Chilton claims to have seen something amorphous and tentacled brush against his windows. Ugh, oh, Frederick Chilton. What an incompetent jerk, am I right? He can't even manage to stay away from potential entrances and exits. Man, I hate that guy. I think it's safe to say that no one will miss him if he's carried off by an interdimensional abomination summoned here by faulty binoculars. Not that that's what's happening. Shh. Shh. The Sheriff's Department may have a lead in Wolf Trap's serial dog napping case, says an inside source who is once again definitely not Brian Zeller. The regular police force is making a non-clandestine inquiry into the matter. Could this be the case on which the incandescently gorgeous and undeniably unstable Will Graham is consulting? Or does this man, who we have all seen with several different dogs, have a more sinister connection? I have been informed by a papyrus slipped under my door that Will Graham is involved in clandestine as well as non-clandestine investigations, and that I should not speculate too specifically. Well, okay, but I can still talk about him, right? 
Right, good. Thanks for the terrifyingly immediate response. Speaking of fine specimens of male beauty, people of Wolf Trap, I have made an astounding discovery in the course of my daily jogs that have absolutely nothing to do with surveillance. While Will Graham is an ideal to which few can aspire, I have come across an unexpectedly fine posterior. We're all familiar with Will Graham's boxer-clad derriere from his frequent unconscious strolls, and we know that his buttocks could not be more shapely had they been molded by the unknowable powers that be. But have any of you ever noticed Francis Dollarhide? You know, that guy at the 24-hour photo place known for reliably developing spirit photography? Friends, wolf trappers, countrymen and women and both and neither, you should. Beneath those chinos hides a butt worth broadcasting about. Mr. Dollarhide was exercising the other day when I passed by his house, and he had neglected to close the curtains. Apparently, he lifts weights in the nude. People of Wolf Trap, when I saw that booty, I was in awe. I mean, the rest of him is nicely sculpted, too. And he has an interesting tattoo. But that ass, good lord. On a similarly positive note, the fog is clearing. Whether there have been any casualties remains to be seen. Hopefully, Chilton will be among them. That would be more good news. In any case, the crisis has passed. It may come back. You should probably stay inside anyway because of the Wendigo. And remember, you are not awake. You are not awake. It's better this way. Keep walking. Good night, Wolf Trap. <laughs>